plant that grow are actually the shoot the shoot is really growing so that it can cause a response and also tip of the roots tip of roots so these regions here are the regions for the growth that causes a response now we may be asking ourselves why do these particular regions are the ones that are having quick response to the stimulus that we are having in the environment now these regions have got a chemical substance which at this point we are going to call them uh, the hormones. The hormones, these are the chemical substance. We are calling them hormones. And an example is what we are calling auxins. Now, when we have got this particular chemicals concentrating the roots and uh, the, the shoot producing them, they can facilitate the growth in the plant. And how do the plants grow? Now the plant, the growth will always occur. So this, we have said, this one stimulate growth, stimulate growth. And uh, we have to know that there is that particular aspect of growth. Now we will see that plants are growing if they are increasing. So we can talk about aspect of growth, of growth. So growth will occur when we have got cells dividing. So one of them is called cell division. So when cells divide, they will increase in a number and that will lead to growth. We can also have growth taking place when cells are elongating, cell elongation or cell enlargement. So these ones here, these cells that are dividing and elongating, they are actually found at the tips of the the shoot and the roots and therefore those are the regions that can uh, we can see that the response is going to be taking place in now this particular growth response in plant has got a name and we are calling it tropism so we can call we can call the growth response tropism so we have got what we are calling tropism so what is tropism it is the growth response growth response so we can say of shoot because this is the region shoot or roots or both of them can normally grow at the same time or both towards stimulus so this is what tropism is all about so we want to see how how do the roots grow how do the shoot grow uh, in response to the stimulus that is there in the environment that is what we want to dwell in so that is what we are calling the tropism so we have got the common stimulus in the environment that i want us to address the first stimulus that we should be looking at is called uh, light for example so we have got various stimulus there are two of them that i want us to concentrate on the first stimulus is light so light is a stimulus therefore the growth response towards light or in response to light is called uh, phototropism so the response here the response is uh, photo tropism this is the growth response towards light and you know light is normally used by the plant for uh, the process of photosynthesis making of the food and therefore in most cases the plants will actually want to grow towards light so when there is that polar response towards the stimulus itself the response become a positive so we are going to see plants exhibiting mainly positive 
phototropism. And they are doing this so that they can access that part of light to help them in making food by the process of photosynthesis. That is very important for us to note that the plants want to access light for making of this particular food that they need for uh, various things in them. So how will, it, how will this particular growth response occur? How can we illustrate this? Now, in the, to detect the light, or uh, we can try to illustrate it using some various uh, examples, like we can talk about uh, uh, phototropism. We can, we can talk about uh, phototropism here by illustrating it using this uh, concept here. So we can illustrate it by using a uh, coleoctyle. Now, coleoctyle is the protective layer of the of the monocots when they are germinating. We have got these particular plants that are called monocotyledonous plants. So we can talk about this is a protective shoot, protective layer of monocotyledonous plant so when monocots monocots are these plants like a maize example we can talk about maize the plants that are if you look at them the their seed coat cannot be divided into two they have got just one seed coat and then uh, these plants here when they are germinating coming out of the soil we have got the delicate part like the shoot so those particular shoot can easily be damaged. So to protect them, they have got that particular seal, and that seal that encloses the shoot when it is coming out of the soil is what we are referring to as coleoctyle. So this is the region that we are going to, to see in the plants when they are germinating so that we can see how we can use this particular idea here to illustrate how the phototropism is going to take place in the plant. So that is one thing that I want us to really understand there. So how can we use this to illustrate this particular concept of the phototropism in plants? So the first thing that I want us to look at is that whenever the coleoptile germinates, when it comes out, when the seed comes out of the soil, I want to use this one to illustrate that particular plant of mine germinating. If this is the level of the soil, so this is my germinating seedling. So here is where we have got the coleoptile, the seal, coleoptile. And then in this case, we want us to look at in the event that light is coming from one direction. So when, one, when light is coming from only one direction, such is referred to as unidirectional source of light. So assuming that I have got uh, here unidirectional source of light. And I've said unidirectional source of light is when light is coming from one direction. What will happen? How is this plant going to grow? Now, if that is the case, we will be noticing that at the tip of the shoot, this plant is able to produce the, the chemicals that facilitate the growth. Those ones, the, the, the hormones in actual sense. And the specific hormones that are being produced here, we have said, they are called auxins. So we can assume that they are here, they are well distributed, they can be produced here like this. These ones are what we are referring to as auxins. So we can have chemicals for growth. These are auxins. This word is simple, I hope you, un you can understand. So these are chemicals that facilitate growth. Now if they are distributed at the tips of the shoot like we are able to see, and light is coming from one direction, that is the unidirectional source of light. What will happen? Now, since we are talking about response, it means that the, the organism that we are talking about must be sensitive so that it can detect a change. So in this case, this plant will detect that there is change. And what is the change? It's light, the direction of light. It is only one direction. So what will happen is that the chemicals here are very sensitive. So when light strikes that, that particular end, what will happen is, the part that is facing light, the chemicals that are next to that part, will be migrating, they'll be diffusing to the opposite end. In other words, they are sensitive to light, so they are moving away from light. So you'll see that, we'll be seeing that the auxins here, we'll be seeing that this other part here will be having a more high concentration as compared to the bit that is facing light. Not all of them will diffuse, but 
quite a number of these particular chemicals will be diffusing to the part that is away from the light. So that is what you are seeing. Now, if this is the substance that is going to facilitate growth, what will actually happen at the end of the day here? Now, what is happening is that the growth is not going to be uniform anymore. Because at one point, there is more substance for the growth at one end than on the other side. And that is the part that is away. So this part that is away from light is going to grow more faster than the part that is on the light direction. So that one will mean that this part is going to be longer, it's going to be taller than this other side. And that is going to make it to have more weight and therefore it is making the plant to bend. So we're going to see a case whereby the plant will start having this kind of growth so that it has got that particular bend. So that at the end of the day, we are going to see that if that growth increases, we are going to see that now there is a curve here. So this is the curve at the end of the day when the plant is growing. So this one is indicating that one side has grown faster and it was growing faster because it had got more chemical for growth, more auxins. And whenever auxins are concentrated at one point, they are going to facilitate cell division. So we can see that light, what has happened here is that light from one side, from one direction, from one direction, makes auxins uh, to diffuse, to diffuse to the darker part. That is one event that has taken place. Number two, we can now say that whenever there is one side has got more auxin than the other side, so we can start by saying that the dark side has more auxin uh, than the light side. Light side. So you see there is that differences that we are seeing in the distribution of auxins. And that differences now will now lead to, so we can say that the dark side is undergoing fast cell division. So the cells are dividing faster. That is another activity that is taking place. And it is the division that is bringing in the growth. And we can see where the growth is going to be faster. So we can see that the dark side is growing faster. Therefore, the dark side grows faster. The dark side uh, grows faster than light side. And that is what is causing the plant to bend towards the direction of light. So that is how this particular response can be illustrated. So that is one thing that we can really understand. Now, there are very many things that this particular chemical that we are talking about here can respond to. And maybe we can have this opportunity to look at what are other substances that this particular auxins or the chemical for growth can respond to. So I want us to look at uh, this particular experiment. Suppose we we carry out this particular experiment to at least illustrate for us how this particular thing can respond to various, uh, various substances. So if I have, uh, I have got my experiment one here, I can have experiment one, experiment number one. So in this case, I can have the shoot of the plant. This is where my plant is. This is the first thing that I have. I can give this plant two treatments. I can chop off the tip while it is still fresh. And then I do this with it. After chopping it, I can fix number one. Let us assume that that is what I've done there. And then I decided to, this is the tip. And then I decided to put it on. Well, this is one thing that I've done. So I had, this is the tip that was chopped. I fix in it, I can fix what is called maker blade. Maker blade in there. So I fixed it there. So the light is still coming from one direction. This is what 
I have done and that's the treatment that I have given to it. And then the same same plant in the same experiment, I can do this, I can have a, instead of fixing the, the blade there, this is now what I have, the same plant there, that is what I have. And uh, I decide to put gelatin in here, that is the substance that I have decided to put instead of putting meter blade, uh, meter, I mean mica blade. How will they really respond to the situation? What will be the effect here? Now at the end of the day, if this one is still also coming from one direction here, the light is coming from one direction. Here also light is coming from one direction. Still unidirectional, okay? Unidirectional. What will happen? Directional. Directional. Source of light. So what will happen in this, we have to look at uh, how will the auxins behave here? How will they behave towards these particular materials that we have? Now, looking at this, this material here is a mineral. So it is not going to allow this particular uh, auxins to pass. It can't pass through them. So this plant here will not grow. It will remain the same, same size. Now in this, this plant will grow and bend. Why? One, this material here, it can absorb, can absorb auxins. So it means that when auxins are in a material that is uh, allowing them to be absorbed or they can be absorbed in, they can still have the influence. So they are going to have the influence of the growth here. And why do they bend? Why will this particular plant bend? The idea here is, number one, we have said that the auxins are passing. That is the first thing, because they are being absorbed. There is that absorption of auxins. Uh, they, are, they are passing. Then number two, these particular auxins that are, have passed here, there is that influence of light pushing them towards one direction. So it was them to pass first, and then the light there is going to have the normal influence that we have talked about so that it can be seen that auxins are concentrating more at one end. So it is influencing the growth on one end than on the other side, so it is bending. Now here, we are saying that the plant will not grow simply because there is that lack of material uh, of auxins because the materials here is 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 very much is hard for the auxins to pass across so that they can influence the cell division so the plant remained the way it is but in this case the auxins passed because of the material that we are using it was absorbing the auxins that is the key thing and then after absorbing or the absorbing the auxins now the stimulus here which was the light here is having the influence so it is from one side and therefore it is going to make the auxins to diffuse to the darker part and then the darker part is growing and then bending uh, making the plants to bend towards light so that is one experiment that we can use to illustrate um, the growth of the plant so that is one thing that is very clear for us that was our first experiment to see how the auxins respond to other materials so we can see that there are some materials that have got uh, the ability to to absorb and then others do not have. So that is one thing. Maybe we can look at the experiment number two and see the next materials that we can be talking about. So suppose I have got experiment number two, my second experiment, and again, uh, this is what I have. So I can have the, the shoot again. I can draw that I have got a shoot of plant. This is the tip that I'm having. And then I decided to chop the tip. It is chopped like this. So I've removed it. So if I remove it here, I have decided to remove this particular tip of the plant. So remember I've gone away with the auxins. And then while it is still fresh, I decided to bring it back so that I have got uh, the shoot is here. But I decided to bring back the the tip that I chop back on one side. What will be the impact on this? What is the, what will be realized? Now basically what we have done in this particular case, 
we have decided to bring the oxygens back because they can diffuse and then we are putting them basically on one side. So there is one thing that is very clear, that the oxygens are more on one side. So whether we bring that particular light here as a stimulus here, there is one thing that is already clear, that there is oxygens on, on one side. And therefore this plant will grow again, but it will bend on this direction. This is how the growth will be. It will be growing, but we are likely to see that it is bending in this particular manner with our tape that was removed here. Now this is because that the oxygens were brought on one side. So this particular side is having more oxygens. And when it is having more oxygens, the activity is that uh, there is a lot of cell division that is taking place on this particular end than on the, the, uh, the other end. So if this is my end A and uh, end B, I am seeing my end A is having more oxygen than that other end B. Therefore, and A is undergoing, to, is undergoing more cell division than that side that is B. So when it is dividing very much, the cells will be growing quickly and that is how this plant will be growing. So we are again seeing the effect of auxins on the growth of the plant. This is when we now actually decide to, to remove them on one side by chopping the shoot and placing them at one edge and leaving the other edge without auxins. And that is one the way that that pillar plant can, can be seen growing. So this is another idea that we can be using to show that there is that particular influence of auxins on the growth of the plant. So that is one thing that it is really good for us to note. So this all this is talking about the phototropism, the growth response of the plants towards light which we can illustrate in that manner. So provided that the materials that we have used here can allow oxygen to pass, there will be that growth. Unless the material is so heavy that it cannot allow the oxygen to pass, we can even use the block. Suppose I decide to put a block in here. That one means that the oxygen cannot pass. So the material is a little bit heavy. In that, we, will, we won't witness any growth. But as much as the, the materials can allow the oxygen to pass, we will be seeing the growth of the plant taking place. So our main concept here that we should be understanding is that the plant is coordinating its growth. The plant is responding to a stimulus. And in this response, there is a material that is needed. There is that chemical that we need. And the chemical is an hormone, and we are calling it oxygen. That is the key thing. So we must always focus on that when we are explaining this. Plants produce very many hormones that can help them in responding to various situations. Not only for growth, we can see when germination, they can have some hormones that help them in this production of the fruits. We also have got even ripening of the fruits and sometimes they also drop their leaves. So those are hormones that are responding to that. So in this, it is very much important for us that we concentrate on the auxins. That is the, the key idea here. And another thing that we are supposed to know about this auxin is that this auxin, the role of auxin in growth is that it is stimulating cell division and cell elongation. So the moment we are seeing a section of the plant, the root, I mean the shoot of the plant, having a concentration that appears to be not balancing the other, the other section of the shoot, one side will definitely grow faster. That is, the oxygen will be more. So in our exam, we must remember that we are focusing on the growth hormone, that is oxygen. And we are seeing how it is behaving towards some uh, stimulus, like in this case, light. So once we have just known that light is like light fearing, it moves away from light, there will be imbalance of this particular chemicals. And when there is that imbalance of the chemicals, there will be imbalance growth and that is really going to happen in the plants but one advantage is that all this happens so that the plants can access the same light so that they can use it for the process of photosynthesis so that is one thing that is very important for us in the growth response about the plant so this is how it happens in the growth of the plant so that is the thing that i wanted you to notice today about the tropism uh, the next thing that we can use to, we can illustrate this diagram with, we can talk about how do the growth response occur in the roots of the plant. So that is what you are going to see next time and we will be seeing how the growth occurs in the root. Thank you. 
Now I want us to have a look at the next growth response that occur in the plant. That is the geotropism, the growth response that is influenced by the force of gravity. So I want us to see how we can demonstrate this and let, it, let us see how it works. Now the first thing that I want us to understand uh, before we go further is that this particular growth response, our main concentration is on the hormones here, the hormones. Hormones. These are the growth chemicals, and in this case, we are talking about uh, auxins. The hormones here, that is what we want to understand, the auxins itself. Now, in the first response that we are talking about for the tropism, we saw that the auxins, the high concentration was influencing the cell division on the shoot. That was the main idea. Now, how do this particular hormone influence the growth in the roots? Now I want you to know that when there is high concentration, high concentration, high concentration of auxins, of auxins in roots, it inhibits growth. Inhibits growth. Now remember that when the hormones are when the hormones are being produced even in our body, they can be produced to either facilitate a process or they can hinder the process that is one thing that should be very clear so they can they have got two influence they can make it to happen quickly or they can slow it down so to slow it down or to stop it is what we are calling to inhibit that is one thing that hormones can do so we saw that in the shoot it was facilitating it was making it to happen quickly so when it is high in the roots i have said when it is high meaning that Growth for it to occur, we need that auxins, but the level of concentration is very important for us. So when the roots grow, they grow faster when auxins are there, but in low concentration. When it is in high concentration, again, it slows down the growth. That is one bit that should be very clear for us here. So how do we use this particular diagram of ours to illustrate the influence of the gravity on this particular, uh, uh, I mean, the response that we are talking about. So this particular setup here, the material here, the, the apparatus here is called a cleaner start. So the, all of this is, we are using what is called a cleaner start to illustrate this. So cleaner start is this particular machine which has got a motor end that can be used and it can make this container to rotate and this rotation will be slowly. So look at it, suppose we have got this seed. So the first thing that we should be doing is to soak these particular bean seeds that I'm having, soak them. Why do we need to soak them? To allow them to start germinating. So when they are germinating, normally the growing part of the seed will come out of the, of the seed coat itself. So we are going to see that we can have the shoot which is growing up to form the, the, the shoot and then we also have got the roots here. So those parts will come out of that particular plant. In a normal situation we know how they should be growing. We should be seeing that the shoot should be curving upward so that it can access light and then the root should be bending downward so that it can get into the soil to support the plant. That is how the normal growth is. But in this case what will we see? Now if this plant is really uh, is, is the, the plant is growing and then we connect this particular motor to a source of power and then it starts tr rotating. So we are going to rotate it slowly. So when I have given you the direction of the rotation here, so it means that the container here is rolling with the seedlings that are growing in it. So that is what comes in the picture in our mind that there is that particular rotation of that container. Now when this container is rotating, the key thing is that that rotation is having effect on the gravity that we want to test with our auxins. And what is the effect here? It is cancelling. It is doing away with the gravity. So the influence of gravity is totally missing when this thing is rotated. So therefore, the auxins will not be having any response to the gravity because it is cancelled. So if it is cancelled, 
what is the meaning of that so it means that when that plant is going to continue growing the plants like they are there let me give you a clear picture of how it is so if this is the seedling and this is the root that is i mean this is the shoot that was has just germinated it has come out of the of the seed and this is the root this is the root the radical this is the shoot so this is how it is the auxins have been cancelled i mean the gravity has been cancelled while it was rotated so it means that if i had got auxins here how will they be there is no pull by the gravity so they are still equally distributed at the shoot so what is the event the shoot will be having uniform cell division and cell elongation so it is going to keep on growing horizontally so we are going to see that there is an increase in length but it is horizontal reason being the auxins did not have a chance to have one side having more auxins than the other so the division here is uniform and it is growing horizontally that is the same thing with the root here the root we are going to see it also growing horizontally because the auxins in the root here they are equally distributed in all the sides of the root and then it will keep on growing so the growth remains horizontal so growth will be uh, will be horizontal reason is the rotation cancel gravity rotation cancel effect of gravity gravity on auxins that is the first thing therefore what happened auxins remained equally distributed auxins remained equally distributed therefore uh, there was a uniform growth therefore there was uniform growth that is the reason why this particular plant at this point will be seen growing horizontally and that is what's going to happen now if any case we were to have a control of this experiment whereby we have got other seeds we can have another seed in the same setup and then that particular seedling now we decide not to rotate the cleaner start what will happen when the cleaner start is not rotated so that is we can say in the event uh, let us have a look at this suppose the cleaner start is not rotated i can say not rotated now what will happen now when we don't rotate it it means that the gravity has got the effect there is that effect of gravity so gravity will be pulling the auxins so if i have got my seedling here this was the seedling that was germinating let us now see what will be happening this is the the shoot that came out and then this is the root that came out so this is the root this is the shoot what do we expect to happen now in this case the effect of the gravity is very clear so it means that the gravity will be pulling auxins towards the downer part so if this is my shoot i'm expecting the downer part of the shoot here to have more auxins concentrated there than the upper part that is due to the influence of gravity so if there is that particular more auxins on the downer part of the shoot what will be the effect on that of that now the effect will be that this down apart here is undergoing faster cell division because when there is high concentration at, on the shoot of the plant there is facilitation of the growth so the growth this down apart is going to grow faster than the upper part so at the end of the day we are going to see the shoot is curving upward so this plant will have a shoot that is a uh, curving upward and we are going to see more leaves are going to be formed when it is growing upward simply because the auxins here were more on the downer part of the shoot than on the upper part and that one is now facilitating more cells to divide and therefore the shoot is growing upward which is very normal in the normal growth so this is a positive um, i mean this is a negative geotropic the plant the shoot is growing away from gravity 
So that is a negative response towards the gravity. Now, if it comes to the root, what will happen? Again, the effect of gravity is still being experienced here. So more oxygen will be distributed on the downer part of the, of the root. And what did we say at the beginning of the demonstration of the geotropic? I said that hormones have got two effects. They can facilitate or they can inhibit. So in this case, in the roots here, the hormones, for a reminder, will be inhibiting the growth. It will be slowing the growth. So that one means that the downer part of the root here, because it has got more oxygen than the upper part, there is low growth. There is low cell division here on the root, on the downer part of the root. Remember, I've not said on the entire root. I've just said a section of the root, just like we have been illustrating with the, the section of the shoot here. So this section here is undergoing slow growth, and the upper part is undergoing more growth. So we are going to see that there is a, a bend downward because the upper part of the root is growing faster than its downer part because of the fewer of this it has up there is facilitating the cell division. This one here is inhibiting, it's slowing down the, the, the cell division on the downer part of the root, so the root will be bending downwards. Now this one here is a positive geotropic response. It is responding towards the root. So that bit should be very, very clear, and I want to believe that it's not confusing because it's very direct that the more concentration of auxins and a section of the root will stop the root from growing or it slows it down. And then the few auxins that are on the upper part of the root is facilitating the cell division and then the cell is the cells are dividing quickly on the upper part of the root and that make it to grow more fast and then it curves downward as it gets into the soil so that the plant can get the support that it, it, it should be having or get more water from the soil that is the basis of the plant growing uh, towards the gravity. So that is how this particular response is. So again I want to remind you the learners that uh, whenever we are explaining a concept of the chemical coordination in plants, we have to understand what are the chemicals involved. And the main chemical that is involved here is oxygen as a hormone. Now what is the effect of oxygen? The auxins are like the growth facilitators. So they, they can make the growth to happen quickly or they can slow it down. So when do they make the growth to be quick? I've said that the growth is quick when the auxins are considered or the shoot. That one the growth will be very quick. When the auxins are more at the root, they tend to slow down that particular section of the root of the growth. So that is the next thing that we should be understanding. And then when they are responding to the stimulus, the stimulus is making the distribution of auxins to be unequal, not to be equal, that is. So when that particular uneven distribution has come in, as learners, we should really realize that when one side is having more oxygen, what is the effect? So the effect is what we have been trying to explain, and that play effect will be making the plant not to have the uniform growth until a point will be of neutral whereby the auxins come to normal distribution again. So that is what I want you to really understand at this particular area, and uh, I want you to really try to follow up. And in any case, there is any difficulty that you are experiencing in this particular chapter, be free to contact so that we may explain further on an area that might be confusing to you and then be ready to understand the concept and the exam idea that is all about this chapter. Thank you very much. Next time we'll meet in the nation.